Yes. <laughs> okay. This is how it always goes, right? You think it's all set up and ready to go and you log on one minute in advance, very confident. And then Facebook suddenly wants to use two-factor identification because it wants to know that the computer you're on is a legit computer, which I appreciate. Thank you, Facebook. But then to get my login code on my phone, and I know you folks are waiting, and whoa, here we are. But cue the copyrighted music, imagine it playing in your head, and I want to welcome you all. Thank you so much for joining me today. And as we are talking about plants and gardens and number one, hydrangeas, right? This is the hydrangea happy hour. And um, for those of you who haven't been here with me before, I often ask you, since this is a happy hour, type in what's in your glass or your cup tonight. Doesn't matter whether it's a cocktail or wine or uh, sparkling water or, you know, a celestial seasonings tea. Uh, tonight I have sparkling water with a sprig of lemon. Uh, no, not lemon, a sprig of um, mint, uh, spearmint. So I've got that. And then I will have my cocktail after the presentation because I can't drink on Zoom, right? So, but this is what matters here. Why I love this list of things that you have in your glass is that we know we are in a community here, right? We are raising our glasses to plants, to gardens, to each other, and all of that. And we are taking time to take a breath, relax, and focus on the most life-affirming thing on earth, which is growing plants and gardening. And today, because it's the start, today is the kickoff day of the Hydrangea Festival. I've got my dried hydrangeas from last year, all right, behind me. And this shows you how, you know, when you dry these plants, they keep their color a long time. So um, we've got, you know, we've got our beverages in hand. We've got each other's company. We're going to have a presentation about hydrangeas. And then I'm going to answer your questions, whether it's about hydrangeas or whatever else um, you want to know. We're going to do that until six o'clock. So for those of you who have been with me before, welcome. For those of you that this is your first happy hour, welcome. Uh, we have been doing this since COVID shut us down in March of 2020. And it is a way for us to affirm, you know, positive things, every, you know, once in a while on Friday night. And we are doing it on Friday night. And by the way, I will take questions in chat um, for all of you who have questions, type them anytime in chat, and we will take questions after my presentation. So without any further ado, and by the way, if you are watching on uh, Facebook Live, know that you can type a question in comments. I won't get to it during the program because I can't switch back and forth between Facebook and Zoom. But I will answer any questions that are written there within the next 24 hours, okay? So let's get to the slide presentation. We're gonna play my slideshow and we are off and running with the hydrangea happy hour. And I just have to tell you that the wine glass filled with hydrangeas is for illustration only to make us feel good and to know it's a happy hour and it's about hydrangeas but hydrangeas are not edible. Do not put them in your cocktails. Do not put them in your salad. Do not put them to ornament your cake, all right? Use them in the bouquets on your table because they are not edible. Now you'd have to, by the way, you'd have to eat a ton of hydrangeas for them to be poisonous, but still you don't wanna do that. All right, so let's go back. For those of you who are in the Northeast, and I know that many of you are, all right, 
let's go back to February 4th, 2023, when I knew we were in hydrangea danger. Because here in Sandwich, the temperature at my house got to nine degrees below zero. At Heritage Museum and Gardens, not too far away from me, it was even colder. Some places on the Cape, down to zero, two degrees below. But what, you know, once it goes much below five degrees, those blue mop head and lace cap hydrangeas get zapped. All right. And that's what happened to us this past winter. Here you see one of my hydrangeas. This is an unknown hydrangea. This was one of the few plants that was in my, uh, on my property when I moved here in 2008. It is a hydrangea that I have no idea what it is. I've had hydrangea people look at it and they have no idea what it is. Um, normally it's a nice plant, but this year, look at all those bare canes. That's hydrangea danger because the germ of the flower for next year was in all of these buds, all right? All of those black buds that you see on there, that was supposed to be the flowers for this summer and needless to say, not happening. Those, you know, many people told me that they are reluctant to cut down those sticks because they have read that hydrangeas bloom on old wood. Those sticks are not old wood. Those sticks are dead wood. <laughs> and once something is dead, it is dead. It's not coming back to life. All right. So the important thing was to get those out of there. If you still have dead sticks in your hydrangeas, go out this weekend, do your plants a favor, go in there and go with the, the loppers so you can get down in and cut them now near, near ground level and cut them out because dead is dead. They're not coming back, all right? Now, what we also saw with some hydrangeas this past season is that some buds made it through the winter, right? Only to collapse just as they started to green up. And here we thought, oh, that's gonna be a flower and that's gonna be a flower and nope, the plant suddenly collapses them. It's almost as if the plant has decided to anthropomorphize a bit. It's decided that its future lies down here at the base of the plant where all that green and new growth is coming. And the plant has decided, why am I putting such effort into pushing these buds out when the reality is what's going on down here is so much more vital. And so it jettisons those buds, heartbreaking for us because we thought we were gonna have flowers there, but you cut them out. All right, this is a reboot year for mop heads and many lace cap hydrangeas on Cape Cod. We have a winter, a year like this, about every seven to nine years. So we deal with it, right? We deal with it. And here's the thing. Here is how that hydrangea that I showed you before, my unnamed hydrangea, this is how it looked um, in May when I cut all these dead canes out. This is how it looked three days ago. All right, so as you can see, it's almost as large as it normally would be. It doesn't have any flowers on it, but it is going to be just as big and healthy and God willing, we have a warmer winter or at least a normal winter without that polar vortex plunge, I will have flowers on this plant next year because it forms its buds on old wood. Now, I frankly wish that the whole hydrangea community would drop this old wood talk because I think it's confusing. I think it's confusing to you because old wood indicates like bare brown canes, you know, that's not what it means. This is what it means. Um, what it means is that in July and August, meaning this month, next month, on those canes, 
that have leaves on them right now, maybe they don't have many flowers, but they've got leaves on them, right? These buds are the germ of next year's flower. That's what old wood means. It basically means that next year's flowers are formed in July and August of the previous year. So what does that tell you? It tells you a few things, okay? Number one, it should tell you to look at your shrubs, right? At the end of this month and in, in August, look at your shrubs. You will be able to see these buds right here, okay? that are in where the leaf attaches to the stem. You will be able to see those. Know that those are the germ of next year's flowers. So number one, that tells you to appreciate that they are forming buds in July and August. Why you don't wanna let a hydrangea dry out a lot in July and August, because those buds could dry out if you don't water these plants. So that's one thing. Number two, it tells you you can't ever cut this plant down. You can't neaten it up. You can't make it shorter. It's, you know, because if you do, you will be cutting off those buds for next year. So there is no good time to make them shorter or neaten up the sticks. Basically, all the pruning you want to do on this plant is to take out anything dead. Other than that, you leave it alone because whether it is pruned in the fall or the spring, it will grow just as high by the end of July next year with a dome of green leaves if you've cut off those flower buds. This is a Nico blue that happened to be in a year when all hydrangeas were blooming really well. And this one only has a few flowers and it's got a dome of green on the top because some well-meaning landscaper neatened it up in the fall or the spring. Don't prune these plants back. If you've got a blue hydrangea, lace cap or mop head, the only pruning you should do is in late May, you should cut out anything that's dead and doesn't have green leaves. That's it. All right, because they replace their height by mid-July. All right, yeah. Excuse me, let me get a water here. That's my dog, Sparky, isn't he cute? He's a Puerto Rican street dog, very suspicious of anything unusual. Um, and here he is suspicious of that blue hydrangea. <laughs> so um, you wanna plant your blue hydrangeas where they can get to be as tall and wide as their genetics are telling them to grow. In general, you know what? That's great advice for any plant. You read the tags on any plant you buy, add a couple of feet to the height and the width, right? Because they always get bigger and plant accordingly so that you can just let them grow and you don't have to try and control their size. Now, you may have some hydrangeas that have flowers on them this year. They are the varieties that what we hydrangea geeks call remontant. That means they bloom on new canes as well as on the buds from last year. Now on our great famous remontants like Penny Mac and Endless Summer, right? The majority of those blooms were formed last summer. So the majority of the flowers come from the buds formed in July and August of the previous year, but they also will make some flowers on their new growth. And thankfully this year, we are seeing some of those flowers. So here is my Penny Mac. And look, I've got these blue flowers here and more coming along. My Endless Summer, which is right behind the Penny Mac is very similar to that. So on any plant that blooms on both new and old growth, you will have a few flowers. So we are grateful for that. We also have been able to learn this year which varieties are more bud hardy. And we have seen that Tough Stuff and Tough Stuff Aha, which are both lace caps like you see here, they are more bud hardy they still bloom on both old and new growth, 
right? But they're a little bit more bud hardy, um, or at least they have been in my garden. And I have found that summer crush is crushing it in my garden because it has come back more bud hardy. Um, it's a plant that also will flower on new growth. So I'm hoping that these new canes here will have flowers, but all of the flowers that you see here on my summer crush are from last year, buds that made it through that nine degree plunge. So I'm, I'm loving summer crush this year. Um, and summer crush, by the way, we'll talk a little bit more about color on hydrangeas moving forward, but summer crush is a bright pink in alkaline soil and it is blue going to purple in acidic soil. So you want to grow your mop heads and your lace caps, all right? The big blue balls and the lacy blue ones in part shade for the longest lasting flowers. This is very important. People who plant these plants along the driveway in full sun, they will enjoy flowers in July, but by August, those flowers are gonna be brown and toasted. People who plant them on the south facing side of their house in their foundation planting, they will enjoy blue flowers in July, but by August, they will be browned and toasted. So you wanna plant these plants where they are in morning sun and afternoon shade. Now this year has been a great opportunity to evaluate some newer varieties. And a lot of the plant breeders, they are breeding hydrangeas, not just for how the flowers look, but how the shrubs perform in a variety of conditions. This is Let's Dance Sky View in my garden four days ago. This was one of the plants that died to the ground for me last winter. But look at it now, coming back huge, right? Huge. So Let's Dance Sky View blooms on both old and new growth. It's a Vermontan variety, but it's on new growth right out of the gate. So I'm loving this plant. Let's Dance Rhythmic Blue in my garden. These plant, you know, these flowers are huge. This was another one that died right to the ground for me. These are not buds from last year. This is on new growth. Big flowers, gorgeous blue flowers. I can hardly wait for next year when the plant is bigger because all of these were small plants when I put them in last year. So I can hardly wait to see what this one does moving into the future. Can do. Many of you heard me rave about this one on the radio last weekend because can do was another plant died to the ground, again, filled with flower buds. And by the way, these flowers, it, can do is interesting because it starts out looking like a lace cap and then the flowers keep opening up all over those flower heads and they end up looking more like ball hydrangeas as the summer goes on. Um, this is a plant that is pink in alkaline soil and lavender in acidic soil. This was in my garden a couple of days ago. So I am very excited about this plant. It's one that will grow about three feet tall and wide over you know, time as it gets taller. Here are the Let's Dance Can Do that I took of this picture at Hyannis Country Garden today because I wanted to show you that as the flowers go on, look at this they turn into almost the mop heads, right? Uh, you know, they start out kind of like lace caps and then they turn into a, a mop head looking plant. These of course were grown in alkaline soil, the potting mix um, in my garden, my naturally acidic Cape Cod soil, they um, are growing uh, lavender color. So, but um, uh, Country Garden has these up the main walkway right now and. If you go in this weekend, you should check them out. And um, I'm, I'm gonna talk about this toward the end, but the hydrangeas are all 20% off right now. Just a little insider information there. All right, we appreciate our smooth hydrangeas and our panicle hydrangeas. These two species flower on new growth. They're not forming their buds the year before. So they don't care how cold it gets in the winter. 
they're going to go ahead and grow and bloom no matter how cold it was. That's why they can grow paniculatas and arborescents in my home state of Wisconsin. Hardy, hardy plants. Let's take a look at some of the smooth hydrangeas. This is our native plant, hydrangea arborescens. And you wanna grow smooth hydrangeas either in full sun or in part shade. These are pretty adaptable plants. Probably the most famous of the smooth hydrangeas are the Annabelles. And they are the ones that the flowers start out green, then they turn white, and then as the flowers age, they turn green again. Um, all of the arborescents are nice as cut flowers. Incredible is similar to Annabelle, but with a little stronger stems. So look for that one. Um, beautiful plant uh, for sun or shade. This one is Limetta. It is a shorter plant, so good in smaller situations or in containers, right? And it has lime green flowers. Um, so I love this one. Uh, Invincible Spirit too. And by the way, this was uh, tested as being one of the best smooth hydrangeas for pollinators at the Mount Cuba um, Center for Native Plants. So this one, good for your garden with the pink flowers, good for cutting flowers for bouquets, good for pollinators, blooms no matter how cold it gets. Win, win, win. All right, wee white. It's a white one that's small. You need a plant for in with your perennials. You need a little hydrangea for a small area in your foundation planting or in the front, you know, a little area next to the garage. Wee white is a good one. In my garden, they've gotten about uh, not quite two feet tall and two feet wide in that range. So a pretty small plant. And mini mauvette. Here's my mini mauvette right now in my garden. I took this two days ago. In my garden right now, I have a verbascum explosion. That's all these yellow plants that are um, biennials and perennials in my garden. And yeah, in mid-June, my garden explodes with verbascum and the bees love it. And then I have to edit a lot of them out because otherwise, things would be a verbascum forest. So high maintenance plant, I'll say that. To me, worth it. What's not high maintenance is mini mauvet. Okay, mini mauvet is uh, small and kind of mauve and a nice plant that's easy. Now the panicle type of hydrangeas are in the genus and species of hydrangea paniculata, okay? And these are the best hydrangeas for full sun. So if you've got that hot southern exposure, you've got a full sun location in your yard, you can plant the pink Invincible Spirit, certainly, or Annabelle, right? Um, but, you know, don't put the blue ones there. Put the paniculatas in there. Uh, one of the most famous paniculatas is, of course, limelight. Uh, and limelight was one of the early in the paniculata breeding, you know, the, one of the first paniculatas was PG, uh, Hydrangea paniculata grandiflora, and grandiflora meant big flowers and they have big flowers. But since then they've done so much with hydrangea breeding, including limelight. This one is Bobo. It is a hydrangea with white flowers that is smaller, gets about four feet tall and four feet wide. So Bobo is a nice one for foundation plantings and for places that are smaller. Firelight is one of my favorite paniculatas because it starts out white and then it turns pink. It blooms, it starts blooming in July. So that's good early on, whereas limelight and Grandiflora really don't start blooming till the end of July or even early August. Firelight starts blooming early and it turns pink pretty quickly. And then it turns like this beautiful dark pink and burgundy wine colored red into the fall. So firelight is a good one. And there's a small version called firelight tidbit that stays smaller and it has nice big flowers, of course that um, bloom 
I would say mid-July, not real early. It's not as early flowering as, as uh, firelight or as quick fire or little quick fire, but still a good plant that turns pink. This is one that you should look for. This is Fairy Trail Bride. This is actually a hybrid of several hydrangea species. Um, bred uh, in Japan, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And it blooms on new wood. In fact, uh, the Fairy Trail Bride in my garden that I planted as a small kind of a trial plant last year, um, it started blooming before the leaves were even out. It's like pumping out these white flowers as it's still growing into these cascading branches. I can't wait to see how this does over the next three or four years. I have it on a slope where it can cascade. I had another one, a smaller plant, in a bucket that was by my test garden. And I didn't get around to planting it in the ground last fall. And I figured it probably would not live in that bucket outside, no protection all winter long. It absolutely made it through the winter. <laughs> so this plant is a little tougher, I think, than people may realize. So look for this. It's a new plant to the market. Um, not commonly available yet, but uh, watch for it. And of course, we don't want to forget about our oak leaf hydrangeas, our native hydrangea quercifolia, the oak leaves. You know, many people think of these as being shade shrubs, and they do tolerate a lot of shade. This is my plant on the side of my garden. And if you come and visit me during the hydrangea festival, you will see this in between my vegetable garden and the cul-de-sac, kind of on the edge of uh, the property there. And it's quite happy. This is how it looked a couple days ago, right after a rain. Um, but, you know, they certainly do grow well in part shade. This is my friend Joyce Jenks garden, and this is a shady part of her garden. And you can see the oak leaf is doing well. Plant an oak leaf where it can get to be the size and shape that its genetics are telling it to be, all right? Don't try and keep this small. Don't prune it into a green meatball. Let it be a natural shape. And know this, that the more sun you plant these in, the better the fall color. Many people think of these as shade shrubs, but they actually tolerate full, dead on, southern exposure sun. And the more sun they get, the more brilliant their leaves are in the fall. Now let's talk a minute about hydrangea trees, because there are a couple of ways that you can get a hydrangea tree. One is to buy a grafted plant and one is to grow your own. At Country Garden, we get in grafted plants that are a hydrangea bush grafted on the top of, or perhaps trimmed, sometimes they are grown on their own trunks and trimmed that way, so that you've already got a trunk, you've got to start to a hydrangea tree. And for people who want instant coffee, this is a fine thing to do. This is my hydrangea grandiflora, PG hydrangea, paniculata grandiflora, PG, right? Um, and this was a grafted on a trunk version that I bought 15 years ago at Hyannis Country Garden and planted it and this is, you know, pretty much how it looks today. So a nice tree version. But if you can't find the variety that you want in already a tree version, you can train these plants to be tree like yourself. And basically you decide whether you want a single trunk or multi trunks. And instead of pruning them off the top, here off the top, you prune the bottom limbs up, exposing the trunks from the bottom up so that you over time create a multi-stemmed small tree. Pinky Winky and Quickfire are two that are very easy 
to turn into hydrangea trees, quick fire in particular, because it's very fast growing. So, you know, this can be a solution, by the way, if you've got a hydrangea that you feel has gotten too large, well, it's almost impossible to make it small again. So instead of trying to make it small, think about turning it into a multi-stemmed small tree. You can do this with limelights. You can do this with Tardiva, Pinky Winky, Vanilla Strawberry, you know, on and on it goes. There are many varieties that make great small trees. Now we're gonna do some hydrangea FYI here. And then after we get through this, I'm gonna take your questions in chat. So anybody who has a question, by all means type it in chat, um, either now or when I come out of the presentation and we'll go through from top to bottom and answer the questions until six o'clock. Now, here's one thing that I think it's very important for you to know. Just because your hydrangea is wilted doesn't mean it needs water. I took this picture of one of my lace caps. This is one that's not gonna flower this year, right? But it's already, you know, four feet tall and five feet wide. And I took this picture yesterday and that hydrangea was wilted. Look at that. It looks thirsty, doesn't it? But I have to tell you the ground was fully saturated yesterday. This is not a thirsty plant. So why is it wilting? It's wilting because in hot weather, particularly in direct sun, these plants have such big leaves and the big leaves transpire the, the water vapor through the leaves, through the pores of their leaves, right? They, they release that water vapor, kind of like we sweat when we're hot, right? But they do it so quickly that the plant can't take up the water that's there in the ground for its use. It can't take it up fast enough and bring it up through the stems into the leaves fast enough to keep the leaves from wilting. And so you will see, particularly if you have a hydrangea, one of the blue ones that's in direct sun from 11 to two, right? You will see these plants wilt. Now here's that same plant three hours later. I did not water it, no, because the ground was fully saturated. What happened over the past three hours? The sun moved over the house. This plant was in the shade. Then the plant had the opportunity to absorb the water from the ground and to replace the water in the leaves that keep the leaves firm and not wilted. So just know that as you go through the summer, a wilted hydrangea does not mean that it is thirsty. It means that it's probably transpiring water faster than it can take up. By all means, check the soil. If you have a wilted hydrangea, put your hands down in the dirt. Use your eyeballs, use your brain, right? Don't depend on automatic irrigation systems to tell you what to do. Um, use your eyes, use your brain, use your hands. If the soil is dry, by all means, get some water on that plant. If the soil is moist, like my hydrangea soil was yesterday, you don't have to water it, you just have to wait for the sun to move on. Let's talk a little bit about flower color, all right? Because this is something that confuses people. There are some hydrangea species that will not change flower color no matter what you do to the soil. And the smooth hydrangeas, hydrangea arborescens, are a couple, uh, one of those species, okay? It does not change. Flowers that are pink initially will stay pink. Flowers that are white will stay white. Some of the flowers like Annabelle start out green and then they turn white and then they turn green again. Some of them like Sublime, a new variety I can hardly wait to get my hands on, um, will stay green no matter what. And, um, but these will never turn blue. And you don't have to bother thinking about the pH of the soil for these plants because that has nothing to do with how they color up, 
It's solely a matter, matter of genetics for these plants. Similarly, for the hydrangea paniculatas, the panicles will not change color with pH. Now, oftentimes their flowers age from white to pink. This is pinky winky. Pinky winky flowers start out white and then they turn pink on the bottom and then the pink goes up. And so pinky winky, you have those two tone white and pink um, over the course of the summer. Vanilla strawberry, kind of similar. Berry white, um, one of the varieties from Bailey's Nursery, similar, okay? Pink and white on the same on plant at the same time. And then the flowers turn all pink and then maybe all kind of wine red. This is firelight, they turn a beautiful pink and then a nice wine red color. These will never be blue unless you hit them with a can of spray paint. So, but most big leaf hydrangeas, hydrangea macrophylla, and mountain hydrangeas, hydrangea serrata, right? Most of these will be blue in acidic soil and pink in alkaline soil. Now, there are a very few that don't change color or don't change color much, all right? But the majority of them, if they are growing in acidic soil, there will be blue and there will be pink in alkaline soil. If you are planting these plants on Cape Cod, if you do nothing, your hydrangeas will be blue, unless for some reason your soil has been artificially elevated in pH, either from liming the lawn or from the lime that leaches out of concrete, right? Or occasionally, and this is only occasionally, occasionally a town will raise the pH of its water so significantly that it raises the pH of your soil when you water with that water. It's a little bit less of an issue today than it was about 20 years ago here on the Cape, but sometimes that happens. So if your hydrangeas that used to be blue are turning pink, ask yourself if they are near a cement foundation, a cement walkway, or if they are near a lawn that has been limed repeatedly every year. That's why they're turning pink. If you buy a hydrangea that is pink, know that if you plant it in your natural Cape Cod acidic soil, it's going to turn blue or lavender or purple because the depth of color is genetic, all right? You can alter from blue to pink. You can't make the light Nico blue into the dark blue of a city line Rio or a summer crush or a Mathilda Gucces, right? Because those are plants that have the genetics that will make dark blue. Nico blue will either be light blue or light pink, right? So just know that if you buy a hydrangea that is a dark pink, oftentimes those will turn dark purple or dark blue into dark purple, like Summer Crush. Okay, now occasionally you get hydrangea flowers that just can't make up their mind. And this is that plant that I showed you that's not going to bloom this year, unfortunately, my unknown hydrangea that was here when we bought the house and I have no idea what it is, but this is a plant that on part of the soil uh, that this plant is growing in is affected by the stone dust of the walkway and part of it by the cement pad from the old outdoor shower. And the rest of it is the native Cape Cod soil, acidic soil. So on this plant, I get pink flowers, I get lavender flowers, I get blue flowers. So if you want to have fun, you can manipulate the flower color on one plant by putting lime in a couple of areas and then putting sulfur in a couple of areas so that you've got a couple acidic and a couple alkaline, just remember which is which, right? Maybe you want to label. Um, and you can have fun with the flower color that way. 
I don't tend to manipulate any flower color on my hydrangeas. I plant them and I let them do what they are going to do in my native acidic soil. And I like doing that because first of all, who has time to worry about lime on, or uh, aluminum sulfate or sulfur on my hydrangeas, not me. Um, that's number one. But number two, I feel like I want to know what the plant naturally does. So when you ask me that if you're gonna plant it and you don't wanna do anything, I wanna be able to tell you what color that plant is going to be. So know that there's a hydrangea for every garden, all right, for a sunny garden, shady gardens, uh, gardens that are small, gardens that are large. And by the way, I'm giving a talk on this at Hyannis Country Garden tomorrow at three. We're gonna look at some specific plants and what makes them fantastic and why you might or might not want that plant for your garden. Because, you know, there are a million hydrangeas at Country Garden right now. When not only is the section filled with them out in the hydrangea land there in the nursery um, of all sorts, but they are throughout the property, including many varieties I haven't grown yet. I haven't tried Big Band yet, but I don't know. One of my core beliefs is that you can never go wrong with purple. So I'm thinking might have to have this one. <laughs> but throughout the property, you will find hydrangeas at Country Garden, small, medium, and large. And they're all on sale um, right now, tomorrow through Sunday, 20% off of all hydrangeas, uh, all varieties, okay? And all the things that will help you with your hydrangea, bumper crop, um, organic you know, soil amendment and biotone fertilizer for planting. Challenger Green, our local fertilizer, and they've got a hydrangea formulation that includes sulfur to keep your plants blue. Um, lime, if you wanna turn them pink. Uh, Espoma soil acidifier, which is sulfur. Soaker hoses, all that stuff that you need for your hydrangeas, 20% off. So let's get out of the share. Let's get out of um, my, uh, here, let's escape out of that. There we go. Now I am back, I see all of your names and it's so good to see so many people here today and some new people and some that I recognize from long ago. So now I'm going to go up the, to the top of the questions. Hang on, I'm getting up to the top. Thank you, somebody thought Sparky was cute. He is cute and he is a Sato, isn't he? Okay. Um, I don't know what that is, Rodney, but um, forget Rodney. Um, this is being recorded. We put this up on um, not only Facebook Live is there, it's a recording, but we have this on Hyannis Country Gardens website. So let us record it, okay? We got it, we got this. All right, my hydrangeas were eaten by a deer. Yeah, you know, you start out with Bambi and then you end up thinking those bastards. Well. Um, yes, uh, deer love hydrangeas. And I would advise you to get a bottle of liquid plant skid, P-L-A-N-T-S-K-Y-D-D, -D, and spray those hydrangeas right away. I spray my hydrangeas in the spring and the fall. That's when they're most vulnerable to deer. I get deer moving through here all the time. And I can tell you without, you know, a doubt that I spray my hydrangeas in the early fall. The deer don't touch them all winter, but the ones right across the street, I'm talking 15 feet away from my hydrangeas is my neighbor's hydrangea where the deer browse it all winter long. So um, spray it. Yes, you will have flowers next year. So that's number one. But if I were you, I would spray it soon and I would spray it in the fall and I would spray it next spring with plant skid Plant skid is blood-based. It's the longest lasting deer and rabbit repellent there is. Um, and you don't have to do it frequently for that reason. Um, so that's it. What's the truth about coffee? Does it keep blooms blue and does it hurt them? Love this question, Susan, um, because there's uh, so many myths about coffee in the garden. 
Coffee is good for that. Coffee makes soil acidic. Coffee kills earthworms. All right, let's look at coffee. Number one, it does not make soil acidic. You can throw it out around your plants, roses, hydrangeas, rhododendrons, I don't care, right? If you want, but it does not make soil acidic. Any purely acid material, as it breaks down, as it composts into the soil, it's a chemical process and pH comes to near neutral. So I could make a compost pile out of pure coffee grounds and once it is broken down, it would test at 6.5. That's number one. Number two, your coffee grounds are not that acidic. The acid has come out in your coffee cup and you have swallowed it. <laughs> so they're not even that acidic used coffee grounds. That's number two. Number three, coffee grounds do not hurt earthworms. A small amount of coffee grounds do not poison soil microbiology. That is all internet garbage, all right? So forget about that. Put your coffee grounds in your compost pile along with the coffee filter if you do a pour over and rest assured that it's going to be fine. If you want to scatter your coffee grounds around your plants, no, it doesn't hurt them. Yes, Sparky is a Sato. And yeah, we named him Sparky Christie because a generic name for a generic dog, right? He's every breed known to man. Is it likely that endless summers that haven't bloomed yet will bloom later in the season? Great question, Barbie. And the answer is yes. Okay, endless summers will put out some flowers. It's not gonna be the whole blue display like it normally is with endless summer. But you will get flowers on that plant. Don't cut it back in any way at this point, all right? Some of the flowers may appear in the next month. Some may appear in August um, and some may appear in September and October. So keep the faith your endless summers will put out some flowers. When is the best time to fertilize hydrangeas? I think the best time is to use an organic fertilizer in April, something like holly tone, if you wanna help keep them blue is a good thing. Or the um, if you are using the Challenger Green, our local um, fertilizer that benefits the Cape Cod Challenger Club, if you're using that one, you wanna put it down in May. You probably don't want to fertilize hydrangeas in July or August, unless that plant is there's something wrong or unless you have a soil test done by the University of Massachusetts, the real deal, right? Um, if you have a soil test that shows that you need those nutrients, then you could put them down. But in general, the spring is the best time to do it. New growth hydrangeas, can you shape them, cut them back? No, you can't because the more you shape or the more you cut, the fewer flowers you will have next year, and you will have that dome of green on the top that I showed you. So don't, you know, plant these where they can get to be the size and shape that their genetics are telling them. If you've got one random branch that looks like it's too long, cut that off as a cut flower, or cut it off as a dried flower. These are from last year. Um, cut it off and dry it but don't shape them, don't cut them back at any time, all right? I have a new tough stuff, aha, it is not doing well. I picked off a bud and an unknown bug jumped out. Any idea what it could be? I'm pretty sure it's an earwig. When I look at my hydrangeas right now, I would say that 60% of the stems have earwigs in them. Earwigs are actually beneficial insects, although they look creepy and they can make holes in some foliage, particularly early in the season. If you um, want to, you could spray that hydrangea with Captain Jack's, which is spinosad, and that does work for earwigs. So certainly wouldn't hurt if you wanted to do that, but you probably don't have to do anything. I have earwigs in most of the new growth on my hydrangeas, and I harass them. <laughs> I go up to them and I'll, I'll push them off. I get out of here, get out of here. Right? Go down in the mulch where you belong. Um, but otherwise I'm not worried about them and I don't spray. So up to you. Your garden is beautiful, thank you. 
I have spent thousands of dollars this year establishing a new garden only to have rabbit resistant perennials and annuals be eaten by the bunnies. Any suggestions? I've tried everything. Elizabeth, you probably haven't tried plant skid. P-L-A-N-T-S-K-Y-D-D. -D. Use the liquid, not the granular. Use the liquid whenever, you know, first of all, spray everything that they've eaten before. It'll stop the damage. And what I do is whenever I plant something new, an ornamental, not a vegetable, an ornamental in my gardens, before I go to bed that night, I spray it with plant skid because the whole idea with rabbits is to tell them this is not on your menu. Ditto with the deer, right? Because all animals are creatures of habit and we want to encourage them to get into other habits other than eating the things that we love the most. So spray with plant skid. Um, you'll smell it initially, but then it goes away. If I put my hydrangea in a pot, will it outgrow the pot? A great question. And I wish I had the slide handy to show you, but I have several hydrangeas growing in my garden. And by the way, my garden is open for the hydrangea festival, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Come see me. I'm at two Lawrence Pond Road in Sandwich. You can check out how all my hydrangeas did and I have about 50 varieties of hydrangeas, all right? So come see me. Um, but you, I want you to notice when you're here that I have several hydrangeas under my grape arbor in containers. Four of them are in plastic pots that are literally this big. They are like 10, 10 11 inches square plastic pots. And they have been in those pots for 14 years. I have not put them in bigger pots. I put some compost or earthworm castings and some fertilizer on the top of the pots every single spring. I overwinter them in the garage uh, and bring them out again. I, they show no signs of being root bound. They are happy as clams. Some of them have big flowers. Come and look at them. So no, you don't, they don't have to outgrow the pot, but if you are growing the mop heads or the lace caps, they can't stay out in that pot over the winter. Only a paniculata will do well in the pot over the winter. And let me say this too to you, don't buy a Nico blue hydrangea and put it in a pot. That's a huge variety of hydrangea. Don't put an endless summer in a pot, right? Buy one of the shorter growing hydrangeas and then you can leave it in that same pot. Blue jangles, rhythmic blue, let's dance starlight, uh, no, let's dance some um, can do, let's dance sky view. You know, everybody is growing shorter hydrangeas, the growers these days. Summer crush, you could grow in a pot. Pop star, you could grow in a pot. Um, so get one of the smaller varieties and then you're good to go. How much and when should we cut back large paniculatas like limelight? Well, there are a couple of approaches to the large paniculatas. If you need to cut it back, and if you need to cut it back hard, and I'm talking like by most of its size, you only can do that in the spring, okay? But know that it's gonna shoot up growth really quickly. You are never gonna be able to make it small again. So you might want to consider with a limelight, if it's you think it's too big, you might want to start thinking of it as a multi-stem small tree. But if you do want to cut it back, cut it back hard, knowing that it's going to put on a lot of growth in response, and you want to do it in April. I fertilize once a month with Espoma flower tone from May to August. Do you recognize another for, do you recommend another fertilizer? No, I recommend you have a soil test and see if you're putting too many nutrients on your soil. Um, that's a lot of fertilizer and you probably don't need it, number one. Number two, here on the Cape in particular, we really need to be more careful with our fertilization because we are polluting our ponds and our other waterways. So have a soil test done before you put any more of that. Even an organic fertilizer, you can get too much. I have a new Nanteca blue hydrangea planted in May. The plant looks like it's growing in two halves, 
like it's split down the middle and flopping more to the ground and standing up? Do I need to support it or is this normal? It's probably over fertilized because it came from the grower pumped up on fertilizer. So that's one reason it's flopping. Nantucket blue is not a variety that's known for stem hardiness. I don't even think it's known that much for bud hardiness. You'll have to see this year, I'd probably stake, put a stake in the middle and put some ties to hold it up. And then you'll have to see what it does for you next year. Um, I have many blue mop heads and have one flower on new growth on one bush. Any idea why? Linda, I went over that at the beginning. I hope you were there at the beginning because we went over that. The temperatures went down below zero, down below five degrees and all those buds got zapped. That's why. All right. Can you split hydrangeas to plant in a different area? Yes, and I would do that in the fall or the spring. Is it too late to change their color? Well, no, it's not too late, um, but it does take some time. It's not instant coffee, number one, and always follow the directions for the amount, whether you're using sulfur, which is gentler, or aluminum sulfate if you want to turn them blue, um, read the label use the uh, correct amount because if you put too much of either you can ruin your plants all right that's number one and ditto with lime put too much lime down you can ruin your plants you can burn your plants should you cut off or deadhead the dead flowers if you want to absolutely there's no you must do it and there's no you shouldn't do it if you want to fine if you want to leave them to dry they become what we call cape cod tumbleweeds over the winter I re relocated a few hydrangeas around the house and now they are doing well, but I'm thinking they need more space. What's the best time to move them again? I would move them in the fall. Uh, and you're probably right that they need more space because hydrangeas grow wide. So move them again in the fall, it'll be fine. When to fertilize with holly tone in April. I have a great amount of leaves on plants that have been blooming the past two years. What's going on, please? We went over that and that's the, cold temperatures last February. All the flower buds that formed last July and August got zapped by the cold temperatures. The good news is this July and August, they will form flower buds for next year. So next year, hopefully the winter will be more mild as normal and we will have more hydrangeas next year. Truly, I fully find old wood after all these years. I finally understand old wood after years. Of, thank you, Meryl. <laughs> I'm glad because I think that term old wood is just, you know, what you need to know is they form their flower buds in July and August for next summer. That's what you need to know. And that tells you, you never cut them down. You never neaten them up. The only pruning you do on these plants is to remove dead wood and you pray for a mild winter when the temperature doesn't go much below 10 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, um, the, uh, your blue mop heads, we're almost out of time, so I'm gonna do as many as I can here, but know that if I don't get to any of the, all of the questions, I am saving the chat right now, save chat. I'm saving the chat and I will answer them in a blog on the Hyannis Country Garden blog, all right? So they will be answered. Um, a few years ago, wait a minute. Uh, you, the blue mop heads are already turning brown as if they are dry. What is happening? All right, hydrangea flowers can turn brown because of fertilizer burn. If you've applied a, a chemical fertilizer, miracle Grow, you know, a synthetic fertilizer, uh, a lawn product can do this. Lawn fertilizer, lawn weed killers, herbicides can do this. Um, if the flower itself got hit with something, hot water from a hose, sun heated hose can turn them brown. Um, uh, weed killers around the hydrangea can turn the flowers brown. So any of those things, you're right, it's not that they've dried up because they've been too hot. Well, all right, we are out of time for tonight. Time to go and make dinner but I will answer all of the questions that did not get answered tonight. I will put those in the blog at hyannascountrygarden.com sometime in the next uh, couple of days. Come and visit me during the Hydrangea Festival. If you wanna see all the gardens that are open during the Hydrangea Festival, 
go to hydrangea fest, uh, Cape Cod hydrangea fest .com, or just Google Cape Cod hydrangea festival and you will get there. Stop into Country Garden. They've got some schedules of open gardens. And I will also be there tomorrow at three o'clock live in person. And I'm happy to answer your questions then as well. So have a wonderful evening, a wonderful weekend, and happy hydrangeas, everyone. <laughs>